Good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Before we continue with the video, lots of content here getting thrown out on the channel seven days a week, at least one video per day. So please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It would be greatly appreciated. A lot of hard work going on here in the background to continue to look at uh, not just the local picture, but the global picture as well. Live streams on a Sunday, we've got the Tropical Outlooks on a Saturday and uh, Monday to Friday we've got the European Outlook as well. So busy days and interesting times here on the channel. So I hope you can stick around and continue to watch the weather evolve as we go forward. So the MJO is stuck in a very warm phase at the moment. We are in phases five. We're expected to go into phases six. That would tend to promote more blockiness and uh, possibly drier conditions for the UK. But also we've got the threat for flooding across parts of southern Europe as cooler air gets uh, driven in with systems over that warmer than average Mediterranean Sea. But it is expected, as you can see here off the GFS Ensemble, to rotate into the more interesting phases of 7 and 8 as we move towards the month of November. And it is all eyes on how this pattern evolves going forward. That is the big question. But at the moment, like I say, a very mild pattern. We've got a firmly positive both uh, Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation. So this is the North Atlantic Oscillation going from deeply negative to firmly positive. And the same for the Arctic Oscillation, arguably even stronger positive. Look at this here. Uh, plus, what, one, two, three, four, plus five sigma above the average line here. So that is quite the rise from a negative to what is nearly off the scale positive. And uh, when you've got a, a very positive NAO, you've got uh, you know, a classic uh, strong uh, Icelandic low, and we've also got a strong Azores high pressure system, a firmly Atlantic driven system uh, at the moment here within the Atlantic Basin. But it's not just the Atlantic. We've got a very mild pattern across the majority of the Northern Hemisphere, lots of low pressure across the top, and these strong subtropical ridges affecting both North America, Europe, and even many areas of middle-altitude Asia as well. So uh, it promotes a warmer-than-average uh, overall situation. And this is the rainfall projections of the ECMWF as a result of this upper air pattern with deep lows up near Iceland, the strong high to the south. And uh, we have got a threat of further significant flooding, unfortunately, for parts of the Mediterranean, Around the Balearics, for example, we've got uh, some significant rainfall projected between now and Thursday, the 31st of October. We've also got it across northern Italy as well. Not as much rainfall for parts of uh, Europe elsewhere. We've got uh, very wet conditions uh, up across the northwest of the UK here as we've got our flow coming in from the, the west-southwest. And also it's captured over the high ground and exposure of the Atlantic across uh, uh, Norway, for example, also Iceland and exposure of uh, southwesterly flow. So it's, it's these western areas that are susceptible to catching the biggest rainfall amounts over the next 10 days or so. And we've also got that threat, like I say, a system's undercut. If you start to build heights over the north of Europe, you start to see lower pressure and systems affecting more southern areas of Europe, and that day uh, really increases the flood threat. So I wouldn't be surprised, given what we've seen in the last uh, you know month and a half or so with uh, several flood events affecting anywhere from northern Iberia, many areas of southern France affected by significant flooding in recent times, but also the Alps and uh, northern Italy has been under the gun of extreme rainfall events. And the problem is, with a very warm Mediterranean, that residual fuel means that uh, it doesn't take an awful lot to see more epic rainfall events. And I think that is going to be the threat as we move into the upcoming winter season overall. So you can see here, this is the pattern. 972 millibar low just to the east of Iceland. 1032 millibar high between the Azores and uh, and Iberia. That You don't get much more of a, a textbook positive NAO signal than that. So as we play through, we've got uh, the legacy of uh, Storm Ashley now uh, faded as it's moved into uh, Scandinavia here. And then we're left with this uh, cool westerly airflow, very showery in nature, blustery showers blowing in uh, on a, a very brisk westerly flow. 
And generally speaking, as we play through the next uh, few days here, we're going to continue to see that uh, flow coming in off the Atlantic. Around the top of that um, Azores High, we've got the, our flow coming in. But it's a fairly mild situation and set up here. And then as we move towards the middle portions of this weekend um, and towards the end of the week, we notice here that heights are starting to come up. So we're going to start to see things settling down after what has been quite a turbulent weekend and beginning of the working week. We should start to settle things down as heights rise. You notice here this system over northern Italy always threatening uh, flooding here. But uh, we've got the next system moving into Iceland and it's a uh, trail and frontal system that is going to move in. It's going to be slow to, to progress eastward because of that building high. Notice the shift away from the, 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 the region between the Azores and the Iberia. Now moving into the central and even eastern half of the continent. And with southerly flow around this high, we're drawing our air in from the south. So if we look at the 850 anomalies here, you can see that we've got some fairly mild warm conditions moving in from the south. So we're almost going back to what we've seen at the end of last week here with a digging trough over the Atlantic, ridge over Europe. We're seeing our, our flow coming in from the south and therefore we could see some uh, again, more unusually warm uh, temperatures for the time of the year. Bear in mind that we are now pushing towards the final week of October. And uh, that is quite a mild flow coming in from a southerly direction. Back to the overview chart here. And you can see that that system slowly but surely uh, edges into the UK and Ireland, but then becomes stuck. According to the ECM, it becomes stuck over the UK. So this could be a uh, charge longer spells of rain and with a little in the way of flow that system is not going to move uh, you know particularly quickly eastward so uh, some of these rainfall amounts could start to mount up with that system becoming stuck between a high over the eastern continent and a high over the open atlantic so uh, this is quite a, a blocky stuck type pattern Going forward, that area of low pressure then dissipates. We've got a frontal system associated with a 973 millibar low up near Iceland. That uh, trailing frontal system will affect the UK as well. But it is generally focusing on the west and northwest of the UK. That's where the biggest rainfall amounts are likely to be. Then we get ourselves into more of a northwesterly flow area of high pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia. Very strong area of high pressure. Uh, again, regrouping back towards the Azores once again. And then you've got that kind of northwesterly Shari regime here, but a, a rather somewhat innocuous pattern as we step towards the final days of uh, October. And then high pressure tries to build back in once again. But this is that phase uh, six MGO beginning to show its hand. But again, 1030 plus millibar high to the south, uh, areas of low pressure in the 960s, 970s millibars up towards Iceland and Greenland here. So we maintain this overall positive NAO signal, but they, we should start to see the pattern uh, kind of changing slightly as we move into the month of November. Um, I do fully expect the response of this NAO uh, going back towards neutral with the uh, with the uh, the progression east um, eastwards of the Manjulian oscillation moving in through phases six and phases seven, and then as it moves towards phases eight. It's, the question mark is going to be how quickly do we see the pattern respond with this eastward movement. And it's becoming more amplified. Now, we did see the last negative AO NAO pattern evolve due to the uh, eastward progression through phases 7, 8, and 1 of the MJO. But you notice here that there was less amplification with that last rotation. This, this next rotation back into those same phases is going to be more amplified. So therefore, I would expect to see a response. Heights rising over the Arctic region, lowering of heights where we've got at the moment pretty strong high pressure within in the middle altitude pattern. But it's all about the timing. And there is that lag. I said that in yesterday's video, this lag between the, uh, between the, the, the eastward shift in that wave, that atmospheric wave within the tropics, and the response into the mid to high latitude. So there is always a, a lag of about 10 days to 14 days within the overall system. So uh, we'll watch this space going forward, but they, this is off the GFS extended. And you can see here the low heights over high heights. And then as we play through the loop, you start to see that pressures build, especially just to the west of the UK and Ireland, 
into the 6th to 13-day period. So this is obviously the 26th of October into the first couple of days of November. Still low heights in the north, but we're starting to see subtle changes. Notice here that the heights are starting to come up over Greenland. And then eventually they start to go uh, to positive heights over the top here. So we're reversing the overall pattern. But exactly the exact details of that is going to be still uh, open to question here. But we've got generally a negative over over Alaska. We've got positive heights now starting to build over the the you know anywhere from the eastern United States up into the Canadian Arctic over Greenland. But again, uh, the modeling I think is is going to be slightly sluggish to see an elevation uh, an evolution of colder. Because quite often what happens is the models can be slow to see exactly what's going on within the tropics. And therefore it struggles. It's starting to see heights rising. We're seeing the reversal between low heights versus high heights. Those high heights are starting to come up over the top here. But notice it's still seeing ridging over eastern North America and ridging over Western Europe here. But I would start to suspect that we'll start to see the modeling going to more troughiness over eastern North America and a trough over Western Europe here with positive heights up towards Greenland. That would be the positive NAO AO signal. And I think it will happen as we go through the next week or so. We'll continue to monitor these models going forward here. But a big test, like I keep saying, coming up with regards to the overall pattern. We're in a warm phase at the moment, but we are seeing the rotation in the colder phases of the Mandarin Oscillation, and I would suspect the Modlin will start to catch hold of that going into the next couple of weeks here. So stick around and uh, continue to watch. Uh, I greatly appreciate everybody's support. The channel is continuing to grow, and it's with without your support, the channel can grow. So uh, please uh, be sure to continue to uh, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel is much appreciated enjoy the rest of your uh, tuesday and i'll see you next time with more bye, -bye.